You've heard about oil wars, right? Brutal conflicts fought over a substance that powers our world. But what if I told you about another resource, one even more critical to the future? This isn't science fiction. This is the brewing battle for rare earth elements. These aren't just fancy rocks. They're the hidden ingredients in everything from smartphones and electric cars to fighter jets and renewable energy systems. The struggle for rare earth elements is a high-stakes game with global consequences. What are rare earth elements, you ask? They're a group of 17 metallic elements with tongue-twisting names like neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium. You might not recognize them, but you use them every single day. Without them, our world would be a very different place. As global demand explodes, the race to control these elements intensifies. Don't let the name fool you, rare earth elements aren't as scarce as their name suggests. They're found in various parts of the earth's crust. The challenge lies in finding them in concentrations high enough to be economically viable to mine. Neodymium, for instance, is a crucial component in high-powered magnets found in everything from electric vehicle motors to wind turbines. Dysprosium enhances the heat resistance of magnets, making it vital for military applications like missile guidance systems. From the smartphones we carry to the renewable energy technologies we depend on, rare earths are the invisible force driving innovation and progress. Extracting rare earth elements isn't as simple as digging them up and putting them to use. These elements are typically found mixed with other minerals, requiring a complex and multi-stage process to isolate and refine them. This process often involves harsh chemicals and generates significant amounts of toxic waste, posing environmental challenges. The environmental impact of rare earth mining has raised concerns worldwide. Balancing the economic benefits of rare earth mining with the environmental costs is a pressing challenge that requires innovative solutions and global cooperation. When it comes to rare earth elements, one country stands head and shoulders above the rest. China. For decades, China has strategically positioned itself as the world's dominant player in rare earth mining and production. Today, they control a staggering majority of the global supply holding the keys to this crucial resource. China recognized the strategic importance of rare earths early on, investing in research, development, and infrastructure while other nations lagged behind. They created a vertically integrated industry, controlling everything from mining to processing to manufacturing, solidifying their grip on the global market. This control gives China significant leverage in the global technology race. China's dominance in rare earths isn't a matter of luck, it's the result of a calculated long-term strategy. Back in the 1980s when the rest of the world saw rare earths as obscure elements with limited applications, China recognized their potential. They began investing heavily in research, exploration, and mining, slowly but surely building their capacity. While other developed nations were tightening environmental regulations and shifting their focus away from heavy industries like mining, China saw an opportunity. As the demand for rare earths skyrocketed with the rise of consumer electronics, electric vehicles, and renewable energy, China was perfectly positioned to capitalize. This strategic advantage has given China a powerful bargaining chip on the global stage. China's control over rare earths extends far beyond just mining the raw materials. They've strategically focused on developing the capacity to process and refine these elements, a crucial step in transforming raw ore into usable materials for high-tech applications. This reliance creates a bottleneck effect, giving China significant leverage over global supply chains. This strategic advantage in refining capacity has given China a tight grip on the global rare earth market. The world has watched for decades as the United States and China engage in a delicate dance of cooperation and competition, but the battle for rare earth elements has added a new layer of complexity to this already tense relationship. For the United States, China's dominance in rare earths presents a significant vulnerability. The US military relies heavily on rare earths for advanced weaponry, communication systems, and even the stealth capabilities of its fighter jets. This reliance on China for such critical resources creates a strategic dilemma for the United States. The US government has recognized this vulnerability, taking steps to boost domestic production, diversify supply chains, and even explore rare earth recycling and alternative technologies.
China, well aware of its leverage, hasn't hesitated to use its dominance in rare earths as a bargaining chip in its dealings with the United States and other nations. They've implemented export restrictions, imposed quotas, and even hinted at cutting off supplies entirely as a way to exert pressure and achieve strategic objectives. This weaponization of rare earths has raised alarm bells in Washington and other capitals worldwide. The US and its allies have accused China of using rare earths as a political weapon, manipulating global supply chains to advance their own interests. This has added a layer of distrust to the already complex relationship between the two superpowers. The vulnerability exposed by China's dominance in rare earths has triggered a global scramble to find alternative sources and reduce dependence on a single supplier. Countries like the United States, Canada, Australia, and even some African nations are looking to ramp up their own rare earth production and processing capabilities. The United States, once a leading producer of rare earths, has seen its domestic industry dwindle in recent decades due to cheaper Chinese competition and environmental concerns. Canada, with its vast mineral resources and stable political environment, has emerged as a potential key player in the rare earth game. Australia, another country with substantial rare earth reserves, is also looking to increase its production and become a major player in the global market. This diversification of supply chains is crucial to reducing reliance on China and mitigating the risks associated with geopolitical tensions and potential supply disruptions. Beneath the vast icy expanse of Canada's northern shield lies a geological marvel, a treasure trove of minerals, including significant deposits of rare earth elements. These deposits, scattered across the rugged terrain, represent a strategic opportunity for Canada to emerge as a major player in the global rare earth market. The Canadian government has recognized this opportunity, actively promoting exploration and development of its rare earth resources. From the Nekalacho project in the Northwest Territories to the Strange Lake deposit in Quebec, Canada has a diverse portfolio of resources waiting to be developed. This makes Canada's resources even more attractive, positioning the country as a potential supplier of these critical elements. Canada's potential in the rare earth arena extends beyond just its geological endowment. The country's stable political environment, strong environmental regulations, and commitment to responsible mining practices make it an attractive partner for nations seeking to secure ethically sourced rare earths. The United States in particular sees Canada as a key ally in its efforts to reduce its reliance on China and build more resilient supply chains. Canada's commitment to sustainable mining practices is another key advantage. This commitment to sustainability aligns with the growing global demand for ethically sourced resources. Africa, a continent synonymous with abundant natural resources, finds itself at the epicenter of yet another global scramble. This time, for the rare earth elements essential to powering the 21st century. From the cobalt mines of the Democratic Republic of Congo to the graphite reserves of Tanzania, Africa holds a significant portion of the world's known reserves of these critical minerals. China, recognizing Africa's potential early on, has already established a strong foothold, securing mining rights and investing heavily in infrastructure projects across the continent. This aggressive pursuit of African resources by China has raised concerns about neo-colonialism, a new era of exploitation, where African nations become merely pawns in a global power struggle. Western nations, including the United States and those in the European Union, are also waking up to the strategic importance of securing African resources, leading to a renewed push for investment and partnerships. The influx of investment into Africa's rare earth sector presents both opportunities and challenges. On the one hand, it has the potential to unlock economic growth, create jobs, and improve living standards for millions. The development of local processing and refining industries could lead to greater value addition, moving African nations up the global value chain and reducing their dependence on exporting raw materials. However, realizing this potential requires careful planning, strong governance and a commitment to transparency and accountability. Captain Ibrahim Trari, the leader of Burkina Faso's military junta since 2022, has initiated significant reforms in the country's mining sector to assert greater national control over its mineral resources. In November 2023, Traore inaugurated Burkina Faso's first industrial gold refinery in partnership with Morena Gold. This facility aims to process gold locally, thereby retaining more value within the country and reducing dependency on foreign refineries, and to further this agenda. 
In October 2024, President Traoré announced plans to withdraw mining permits from certain foreign companies, expressing the government's intent to increase domestic gold production and reduce reliance on multinational corporations. He stated, We know how to mine our gold, and I don't understand why we're going to let multinationals come and mine it. African governments must ensure that mining contracts are negotiated fairly, that environmental regulations are enforced, and that the benefits of resource extraction are shared equitably with local communities. The international community also has a role to play in supporting sustainable and inclusive development in Africa's rare earth sector. Developed nations with their technological expertise and financial resources can partner with African countries to build capacity, transfer technology, and promote responsible mining practices. The narrative surrounding Africa's rare earth resources doesn't have to be one of exploitation and neocolonialism. By embracing transparency, good governance and equitable partnerships, African nations can harness their resource wealth to drive sustainable development and secure a brighter future for their people. The world is watching to see whether this new scramble for resources will usher in an era of progress or perpetuate the patterns of the past. The battle lines are drawn, the players are in position and the stakes have never been higher. The fight for rare earth elements is not just about controlling a few obscure metals, it's about shaping the future of our technological advancement, our energy security, and the very balance of global power. The decisions made today by governments, corporations, and consumers will have far-reaching consequences for generations to come. Imagine a world where technological progress grinds to a halt, where the transition to clean energy is stifled, and where the military capabilities of nations are compromised, all due to a lack of access to these critical elements. This is not a far-fetched dystopian fantasy. It's a very real possibility if we fail to address the challenges posed by the current geopolitical landscape surrounding rare earths. The current dependence on China for rare earths has created a strategic vulnerability for many nations, particularly the United States and its allies. This reliance has given China significant leverage, allowing them to influence global markets, exert political pressure, and even dictate the pace of technological development in certain sectors. Breaking this dependence is crucial for ensuring a more stable and secure future, but the solution is not simply a matter of finding new sources of rare earths. It requires a multi-pronged approach, involving a combination of increased domestic production, diversification of supply chains, investment in recycling technologies, and even the development of alternative materials and technologies that reduce our reliance on these elements altogether. The future of the rare earth industry and its impact on the global order is not yet written. It's a story that is still being written, with each passing day bringing new developments, new challenges, and new opportunities. The choices we make today will determine whether this story will be one of cooperation or conflict, of sustainability or exploitation, of shared prosperity or deepening inequality. One path forward leads to a future where rare earths become a source of international cooperation, where nations work together to ensure a stable and sustainable supply of these critical resources. Imagine a world where responsible mining practices are the norm, where environmental protection is paramount, and where the benefits of resource extraction are shared equitably with local communities. This future requires a shift in mindset, a move away from the zero-sum mentality that has often characterized resource competition in the past. It demands a commitment to transparency, dialogue, and collaboration, where nations recognize their shared interests in ensuring a secure and sustainable future for all. Another path, perhaps a more perilous one, leads to a future where rare earths become a source of geopolitical tension, economic instability, and even conflict. Imagine a world where nations hoard these resources, where supply chains are weaponized, and where the race to secure these critical elements fuels a new era of great power competition. This is not a future we are destined for, but it is a possibility we must guard against. It's a stark reminder that the quest for resources has often brought out the best and worst in humanity, and that the choices we make today will determine which side of history we will be judged by. The future of rare earths, and indeed the future of our planet, hangs in the balance. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.